get into the sermon. This will be the third part in the, the series of messages in the book of James, learning from God's servant James. Brother Ron, just a simple title for Elijah, okay, part three, okay? Learning from God's servant James, okay, the servant of the Lord, James, the third part three, okay? And uh, what a book. I want to encourage you to meditate much on James. Meditate a lot on it. It'll help you. It'll help our church. It'll help our country. So what a blessing. It's been to us going through the book of James. Uh, What a servant of God. God help us to be servants like him. So James chapter 1, this time, verse 12, verse 12. If you could give me a little bit of treble here and take the bass down a little bit on this pulpit mic and then turn the volume up, that will help. Try to get some high on this uh, pulpit mic that will help us tremendously. Go ahead and turn it up some. Good. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. All right. James chapter one. What you can do, the boom mic, you can turn the boom mic, the choir mic down some. Okay. But you're going to get a lot of bass from that. Okay. That's where you're going to get that from. Okay. And you can turn that boom mic down some. Not all the way. Because if you turn it down all the way, I won't be able to hear your amens. And I don't want it to sound dead on social network, like you're dead. You know, I like I, li- I like I like the response from God's people. And all God's people say, "There you go." I like to hear you. You see, and I appreciate that so much. Okay, so that's good. That's wonderful. Appreciate it. And uh, so James chapter one, here. Okay, Brother Bro's gonna read verse twelve by himself, and then you're gonna read every other verse with him, going through verse twenty. Okay, again, we read James here, chapter 1, verse 12 through 21, and uh, we'll read these verses responsibly, and I'll read the first verse, and read the second verse, and so on, all the way down to verse 21. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, Neither tempted he any man. For every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the fathers of light, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning, of his own will begin will he begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness, superfluity, nothingness, and receive with meekness and crafted word, which is able to save your souls. Let us pray at this time. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the reading of thy word. We thank you for the blessing of being a house of God once again. And now, Lord, I pray you prepare our hearts for the message. Pray you fill our path with the spirit of God, give them liberty, give them wisdom and power, dear God, as we preach thy word. And, Jesus, we pray you be lifted up. May souls be saved, Lord. We pray life be changed. Christians be encouraged in the Lord. If we ask these things in Christ's name, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Sand is on the shore. He sees every sparrow that falls. He made the mountains and the seas. He's in control of everything, of all creatures, great and small. And he knows my name. Every step that I Every move that I make, every tear that I cry, he knows my name. When I am overwhelmed by the pain and can't see the light of day, I know I'll be just fine. Because 
he knows my name. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. I can't tell you what's in store. I don't know a lot of things. I don't have all the answers to the questions of life. But I know in whom I have believed. And he knows my name. Every step that I take. Every move that I make. Every tear that I cry. He knows my name. When I'm overwhelmed by the pain. And can't see the light of day. I know I'll be just fine. Cause he knows my name. I'm glad he knows our name. Thank you. Would you open up the word of God to the book of James? Thank you, each one that ministered to us in, in music, godly music, Christian music, and um, music that glorifies the Lord. I want to say thank you so much. And thank each one of you being here today and visiting friends. We're going to be a special blessing to you. And may God bless you in a special way. We bless all these that are watching and listening online. And we thank God for these wonderful blessings that God's blessed us with. We thank God for you. James chapter 1. And I want to be a blessing to you. Okay? Would you open up the word of God here? If you will, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. James says here, God says here in James, that when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. James, what a servant. What a servant. How he served God to death and how he was faithful to death. A wonderful servant. And the, he teaches us, the Holy Spirit teaches us through him that, that, it, that blessed is the man that endureth that endures, that endures. I'm talking about endure. W would it help you to endure, friend, because there's many rewards when you just stay at it, you know, and just keep on fighting? There's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of rewards. Think of someone that's going through something a lot worse than what you're going through. It just always, that, that'll motivate you. Because you're gonna you're gonna go through some tough times. Everybody's gonna go through tough times. Uh, what, what motivates me? One of the motivating things, especially you know, th th there's so many. In, in Genesis Revelation, you can do it. You study your life. You, you study there all that Joseph went through, all his trials and all his troubles, all his heartache. Think about what his uh, brothers did to him, how they threw him in the pit, being away from home, and just identify yourself when you're studying your Bible. And this is real. As a teenage boy, all that he had to go through. As a slave to Egypt and falsely accused. And all that he went through, all those years, and watch how God blessed him. See? You, that's why it's important to meditate. You might be going through something. And, and I'll tell you, you're gonna, it's all going to come back to you. It's all going to come back to you. You see? But you will go through something. God will bring tr a lot of trials. God will, and he'll, he'll find out what's, in this whole pandemic, this coronavirus, all that we've been seeing the, these months. Think about it. Think about what, what people have gone through. Think about the suffering. Think about the deaths. Think about people that stuck it out. Think about people that lost it all, bouncing back. And, and, but all through the Bible, you find people that you can, uh, Job, you ought to study Job. When you're going through it, pick it up. Say, man, hey, good night. Think about all these all the children that, that died, 10 of them, all at once. Think about the storms that came. The devil was just let loose, the storms. It took his kids away and all the money in the bank gone. Rich man, a wealthy man, popular man, uh, uh, adored. Uh, they hated him. His friends turned against him. His wife said, curse God and die. How much more can a person take? Worms crawling all over him. Pain, pain. When you're going through it, and, and God, you know, the Lord said, no, no, sir. Ain't no way, ain't no way he's going to uh, curse me. And ain't no way. Uh, Job said, though he slay me, I will trust him. Blessed is the man. 
Job got double. Girls, we brought you here on that bus so that you can get the word of God in your heart and you can be blessed in life. Don't be rude to God. Don't be rude to the ones that love you and brought you here. Pay attention. And realize that God wants you to be blessed in your future because your trials and troubles will come and tears will roll down your eyes. So make sure you're paying attention. Friends, in my life, experience, you know, of course the word of God and those that went through it, Christians and things they suffered, and they just kept on going and put their axe in the ground, cursed the ground. But in my lifetime, I'm God's people. God's people. That's why I bring it up. Uh, Pastor Fredo talked about the young lady in his church down in California, North Valley Baptist Church. That young lady, and there's a number of us been praying for that young lady. Study Mercy in her 20s. Got both her arms cut off. Got both her legs cut off. Think about that. A young lady. In her prime, in her 20s. Going to school for ministry. And how, to my knowledge, the latest thing is she's out of the hospital, and they're in the parking lot, unless things change today. They're not allowed to go into the building. They've been out there in the rain and whatever, whatever weather. And that precious young lady wants to come up to the house of God and have somebody bring her and pick her up. And they're looking for some artificial arms, some legs, artificial legs. You know how they are. It's amazing what modern day technology can do. How God can give so much more. But when I get down, you get down. You think about how gracious God has been to you. That somebody's down. And friends, I want you to know there's people that have experienced their kids being shot and killed, raped and killed and murdered. And there's all kinds of stories we can tell about missing kids. All that people go through. May God help us. May God help us to be faithful servants of Jesus Christ. But the one that we want to look to the most is Jesus Christ. Looking to him, looking to the cross, looking how he endured. I want you to go to Hebrews. I want you to turn to Hebrews, please. I want you to turn to Hebrews, please, in chapter 12. Wherefore, verse 1, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame, is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And we'll talk about the resurrection, how he came up from the grave on Easter time. But before the resurrection is the cross they spit upon him. It's the cross with nails in his hands. It's the cross with nails in his feet. It's the cross with that metal piece and nine strips of leather and hooks at the end ripping the meat off his back looking at his inner organs and in his body and seeing his flesh and seeing his body uh, uh, splattered and uh, the old rugged cross and thinking about how he hung there and then naked and shame and, and sin on him, our God in heaven, the creator of the world that made the daffodil, that made the rose, that made the sky, that made the mountains, that made the oceans, that made the beautiful birds and the beautiful fishes and all that you see in life. God in his beauty that made the sun and the sky and the moon and the stars and the heavens. God himself came down to heaven and became a man and died on that cross and suffered on that cross and became sin for us and went to hell for us. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the Jesus. Rejoice! Heaven is your home. Rejoice! Streets of gold. Rejoice! You're going to live forever. You're going to get a glorified body. Let the church Say amen. 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 Yeah. amen, Pastor Barney. Amen. Yeah. 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 Are you listening? Up here, are you listening? 
Are you listening? Before you think about quitting, you remember Christ. Before you think about quitting, think about him who is spit in the face for you. Before you think about quitting, think about him who agonized on that cross hour after hour after hour. And I know it gets real. Are you paying attention? God will bless you. I don't need to look in the world to tell me that their song don't stop thinking about me. I got God's word that tells me trust in him. He'll take care of tomorrow. He'll come through. If you hang in there, I want you to realize that the Bible says here he endured the cross. Let me hear you say endure. Do you see that in Hebrews chapter 12? Do you see it? In verse 2, do you see it? Who for the joy, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, please. Who for the joy that was set before him, what? And did the cross. I mentioned the young lady, what she's gone through. I mentioned Job, what he's gone through. I mentioned Joseph, what he's gone through. But nobody has gone through what Christ went through. Because God chose me. He chose me. You say, why did God choose that? To show that he loves us. It shows us he hates sin, but he loves us. Sin brings sickness and sorrow and death and misery. He paid for it. I, I will never die. I will never die. Never. And neither will you, you sinner. What I mean by that is, of course, if a bullet went in my brain, it would just come out of my body. And before you know it, we'll be in heaven. We'll never die. That's hard for you to comprehend, isn't it? He that believeth in me shall never die, Jesus said. First John 5, 13 says these things are written. You believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know you have eternal life. If you believe Jesus. Forever. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. You're saved. Saved means you can't go to hell. Saved means heaven's your home. That's why in Matthew 10, 28, he said, Fear not man which can destroy your body, but rather fear God which can destroy both body and soul in hell. He's the one you got to fear. Christ endured the cross for us, despising the shame. Why? For the joy that was set before him. You, you, you've got to realize there's something before you. <laughs> Paul said, if, if this is all we had in this life, we'd be most men miserable. If this is all we had. But we got, we got a glorified body to look forward to. It's real, friend. No, ain't going to be no dentist. No need him. No chiropractor. Don't need him. Ain't no heart surgeons. Don't need them. There's no sickness in heaven. There's no death. There's no funerals. There's no sorrow. He's going to take, he's going to take those tears. He's going to wipe them away. No. Let's go to James real quickly. Go to James, if you will. Go back to the book of James. Go back to James. In verse 12, blessed is the man that what? Endureth what? Temptation. For when he is tried, he shall what? Receive the crown of life. Which the Lord hath what? God keeps his promise. You may not keep yours. I may not keep mine. God's going to keep his. You mark her down, brother. And, and, and you know, um, uh, we, we used to say growing up, God is no Indian giver. I don't like that anymore, that phrase, because I like putting an ethnic group. Um, with somebody going to take a gift back. And, um, God is not a, a, a giver that um, takes it back. He doesn't give you eternal life. and takes so says, okay, I'm going to take it back. I, I, I give you heaven, I'm going to take it back. You've been, you've been bad, you've been wrong. No, 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 no. He keeps his promise. He keeps his promise. 
He said, you believe in him, you have faith in him, you believe he rose from the dead, and you ask him to forgive you, he'll forgive you. It's, it's done. It's done. He's sealed with the Holy Spirit. You, you, hey, streets of gold, mansions bright. You're a child of God. Listen to me. I don't care who you are. I don't care what ethnic group you are. I don't care what, there's only one race. But, <laughs> but we use the phrase, all races. But I don't care what race you are, phrase, type of phrase that we use. I don't care who you are, anybody, everybody, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, there's no, it's not too tough for God to save you. You call on Christ, ask him to save you from hell, ask him to forgive you, he'll lock you in. And he'll never take it back. People often ask me, well, what about after you get it and you're saved and heaven's your home? What about when you disobey him? Simple. What do you do with your kids? You spank them. You spank them because you love them. Well, you're saved. You've been spanked. <laughs> I tell you, I've been spanked by my daddy. I tell you what, <laughs> oh, daddy's light compared when my, my father in heaven spanks me, man. <laughs> oh, we'll take a spanking over our parents any day on this earth. Them spankings, them whoopings on our behinds. <laughs> God gets through with you. Man, you'd be all bundled up and all, you'd be all taped up coming out of that hospital. Coming out of that prison jail cell. After eating pigs, sticking food and prodigal food and the stinking devil's food. <laughs> you would think you'd been in hell. Somebody say that. <laughs> it, 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 it's God's loving us, trying to shake us up our stubborn, stinking wrist. Hey, don't worry about these. We got them. We got them. They're doing their own thing. We love them. We don't wish ill on them. Hey, <laughs> they may get a little old. They get knocked over the head. They'll straighten out. We don't wish it on them. They'll straighten out. They're sitting there laughing. <laughs> they ain't going to be laughing for too long. God knows how to quickly take that laughter over tears. And not only that, there's a reward. There's, there, there, there'll leave rewards in heaven. And then they'll lose rewards right now here on earth. And, and the truth of the matter is they smile at you, but they're miserable. And that's why they drink their liquor, and that's why they smoke their dope, and that's why they go to the clubs, and that's why they're running to the brick and mortar store. Can't find it. There's not a whore that can provide it for them, or a whoremonger. I don't care how many they yoke up with. Talk to me now. Endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that what? Love him. A lot of people think, and this is sad, they think the crown of life, this is what they think, this is sad. Well, we're, we're going to heaven. No, 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 no. What, you know when once we get to heaven, 1 Corinthians 3, there's rewards that people get. There's degrees of blessings. We can't comprehend it the way it all is. But there's a lot, people going to have a lot more when we get to heaven. I, I don't know exactly how, how it's going to be. And I know some people say, well, I'll be glad I just made it there. Not when you see what God had in store for you. You'll regret it. you say, how, fool, how foolish I was. I'll tell you something else, man. There's some things God wants to give us here on this earth in this lifetime. Don't blow it. Isn't that right? Love them. To them that love him, I can honestly say I love Jesus. And not much as I should. Not much as I should. And there's people in this room that you can honestly say, I know you can say, I love you. It's not just talk. Love is more than talk, friends. A wife can say, I love the husband all, and she don't do anything. Husband, say, I love, don't do anything. Oh, I love you, kids. Don't do anything for them. I love you, mom. I love you, dad. That means nothing. If you don't show it. I honestly say there's people behind the scenes in our church. I mean, they're, they're working hard. So much work going on in our church as they serve God and, and watch and sacrifice. There's a point is, I, I want to be blessed, don't you? Blessed is the man. Jesus. You know what? When you hang around with Jesus Christ, he starts sounding like him. For example, go to Matthew 5. Go to Matthew 5. James sounds so much like Jesus. 
you know, he's a servant of Jesus Christ. And people you hang around, you just start talking like them. Isn't that right? In Matthew, in chapter 5, I want you to go to your New Testament. Okay, in the New Testament, you have Matthew, and then you have Mark, and then you have Luke, and then you have John. I want you to go to Matthew, if you would, chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Okay. So, blessed. James said, blessed. He used that word, blessed. And don't take that word lightly. Blessed. Verse 2. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Verse 2. For theirs is the what? Kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that what? Mourn. For they shall be what? Comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall what? Inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do what? Hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be what? Filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain what? Mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteous sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Blessed James has Jesus all over him and in him and through him. And I say to you this morning, blessed are you, blessed are every one of you that endure temptation. This word temptation is a trial that God puts before. Not to get you to sin and not to fall back. The opposite. To bless you. Always remember, God is opposite. Satan is a killer, a robber. God is life. Satan gives a wicked, stinking, miserable life. John 10.10. Jesus gives the abundant life. Satan, the stinking hell type of person. Satan will give you heaven. Come on, talk to me now. Satan is pain. God is comfort. Satan is a fool, foolish. God is wise. Satan is death. God is the resurrection. Satan has demons. God has angels. Satan is pain. God's comfort. Sometimes you want to go and say, Lord, I've done everything I need to do. And there's people that doubt God. And that's what the devil tried to do in church. And he said, and he had his doubts. He, Brendan was right. He was on his knees and he felt bad. But he never cursed God. He never denied him. And I just ask you, would you please consider enduring? Everybody's going through something different in their life. And you're going to go through it. I, know, I, I say 40 years, Brian. It's like yesterday. Four decades have passed through my life. All the explanation how I've survived it is God has helped me to endure. The blessings are far more outweigh, far more. God's goodness weighs his blessing. Don't, 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 don't dwell on the hardship. Don't d- dwell on the disappointment. Don't dwell on the negative. I beg you, go home. Dwell on positive things. Look at the positive in your kid, positive in your marriage, positive in your church, positive in your family, positive in your job. Everybody can dwell negative. Don't do it. Don't dwell on it. 
just dwell on the positive of what God wants to do through this prophet. What does Satan use to get Job, try to get Job now? His children. What happened to his children? He take a person's children and light up quick. What's next? Who's, who's Satan use? His wife, our spouses, our spouse. Satan will use me. Satan will use you. He use anybody who can get to tick you off. As long as he gets you to quit, get you down, go to the next person. Don't know. He really does. It's not easy. Okay? And I beg you to endure because there's many rewards. It might take, it might take giving your life. Let me hear you say Fox's Book of Martyrs. Everybody in this room should have been read Fox's Book of Martyrs. Now I need to read it together, okay? I really do. If there's, a, if there's a book that the devil would strive to stop us, hey, pay attention. Look up here. Hey, hey, I told you we love you. We didn't bring you here on that bus. We don't play around. We don't go out in the rain and come get you and bring you in on the bus and love you so you can talk. Will you be quiet, please? We love you. Shame on you. Look at me. Hey, hey, shame on you if you don't listen. Shame, shame on you if you don't get with the, the best that God has for you. Shame on you. And I love you. Most of you listen well. There's some preachers that don't even take time out to bring you. They don't even care about you. They only spend one minute trying to get your attention. They don't care. But we care. I love it. One time we had a person visit our church. I said, one thing I thank God for, you want to keep this kid straight and just straighten up. And they like that. Finally, somebody tried to help these young people. Somebody saved that. Amen. 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 Uh, I, I, just, I, I just, I just beg you to just stand and stand. And don't quit. Don't, don't fall on your face. Because Satan will use anything he can to cause you to quit. There's many rewards. Okay? And it's coming. In this life and the next. Okay? You get God's best. Yeah? And um, stay in church, be faithful, serve God, and watch God bless you. you know, and what we're looking for, laborers working for God, servants for God like Jonah. It is said, you know, back to Fox's Book of Martyrs, um, that's the book, you know, I, I need to read it more. Kids, you know, you study in school, and uh, but these, these, God's, these are God's people in that day. Lions, they were fed the lions. They, they ate, ate, them, ate them up. And all they had to do was say, I'll stop talking about Jesus and I, I won't go to church. And they said, feed us to the lions. I mean, can you imagine being burnt alive? Your, your, your hands, your feet just burnt while they're singing about God? All they had to do was say, we'll stop. We'll just stop reading our Bible. We'll stop printing the Bible. We'll stop passing the Bible out. That's all they had to do. Leave their religion, leave their church, yoke up with their church. This is true history, these things are. They tormented them, pulled their arms apart. True, true, true. Catholics, Catholics did this. Catholics, the Pope, the Rome, they had the power. Call them heretics. You think government, you think we got problems with our government? Huh? <laughs> Let, you better thank God the Pope ain't did, did, doing what he, what he did. Hey, this coronavirus is real. This pandemic is real. I mean, the governor really trying to uh, control, put fear in God's people. You, I don't know where you've been the last year if you don't know the, de the devil's using this thing. There's people that ain't been in church in a whole year. Still scared. And they're scared to come. They ain't scared to go to Walmart. They ain't scared to go to the liquor store. They ain't scared to go to abortion clinic. They're at the game. But, oh, what's wrong with you coming to church? Spirit of fear, friend. And we need to study those that suffered. Yeah, we, we need to read. We need to read. We need to read. It is said James, when you read Fox's Book of Martyrs, I believe it was James, they bashed his brains in and put him on a high pinnacle. And they, they all waited. They said, we got him now. He's going to recant. 
We've got them now. That Jesus he preached, he's going to tell us no more, no more, no more talking about Jesus, no more. And they were happy, and they said, we're waiting for you, James. And it said, I believe when you read the book of Foxes, the book of Martyrs, oh, instead, James praised God. James preached, and they threw him over, and they took the bat and busted his brains, and it said, on his knees, I believe. And they looked at his knees, and his knees were hard like camel's hair. Servant James caught it a delight. He caught it a delight to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. Those dumb, stinking fools took that plane into the towers, and them idiots went to hell thinking they're going to get some ladies and several wise stinking fools. Devil fools <laughs> woke up in hell. Jesus went to the cross, hung there. James is in heaven because he put Jesus there, not because he got his head bashed in. Before he ever got his head bashed in, before he ever came to church, in his sin, in his sin, Jesus saved him. And when he called on him, he didn't wait till you joined the church. He didn't wait till you got baptized. He didn't wait till you stopped cussing. He didn't wait till you stopped cursing. He saved you. He saved you. He saved you. The day you called on the Lord Jesus Christ and you asked him to forgive you, he saved you. Just like he did the apostle Paul when he was killing Christians. He didn't wait to Paul preach. He didn't wait till he joined the church. Hey, kids, while you run your stinking mouth, while you play, while you're acting like a stinking brat, the pastor loves you. Your Sunday school loves you. We run our bus. Go ahead, wreck your life. A bunch of 15-year-olds killing each other in this city on dope. A bunch of 12-year-olds getting pregnant, rat ruining their life. Go ahead and ruin your life. But you will know a preacher loved you and cared about you. Get some boy that'll slap you around one day ain't got no decent husband in the home you go ahead and repeat the mistakes of your parents go ahead be a dope head go ahead be an alcoholic go ahead but there's some young people that god is raising up to be a servant like james amen pastor barnett amen sit up girls sit up You've been a bunch of brats long enough. Shut up! Shut up like you're in the presence of God. Thank you. Pastor happens to love you enough to scream at you. We got some getting married now with godly Christian families. Husbands that love God that will be leaders. Wives that know it is the joy to submit to their husband and the children to obey and for them to submit to one another to love each other. Not got to worry about where they're at at night. Not getting slapped around. Hey, look up here. This thing's real. You get God's eye. You got to make up your mind you're going to get God's eye. Endure. You hear me? Endure. It's not easy. Life's not easy. Whoever said it's going to be easy. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, I love these people. I like to preach longer, but we're going to keep it short. With your help, I was able to keep it short. I would like to, I could preach another hour, but I won't do it, Father. It's so much in me to try to help these people, but to glorify you is my utmost desire to please you and if I can do that you can help these people father I love these little children these little teenagers Lord they may say pastor's right but God I don't want them to have a wrecked life God would you please help them help them to love Jesus please help these kids to love Jesus please please help these teenagers and adults to love you heads are bowed eyes are closed let me ask you this question first Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Let me ask this question. How many of you are 100% sure when you die, you know you're going to heaven? 
How many of you are sure if you died today, you'd go straight to heaven? Would you raise your hand, please? Thank you so much. You can put your hand down. 